I often receive emails of those who think they know who Cicada 3301 are, or are even members themselves. Most of the time the ideas are far out theories, such as 3301 is a hit squad. It wasn't until recently I received one of these emails that really piqued my interest. He goes by the name of G. He is a winner of the 2015 puzzle and solved Liber Primus. You are probably thinking there was not a 2015 puzzle. Well, there was a 2015 puzzle, and that will be explained in detail. This story is told by G and goes into the inner sanctum of 3301 and his journey getting there. Here we go. I'm going to be as honest and forthcoming as possible with you, without compromising myself. It is no pseudonym, it is my real name, but you can call me G. I thought emailing you from a personal account rather than an untraceable one, which I normally conduct 3301 business on, would give me a sense of credibility. I trust you will keep my name and my personal information private, so why am I doing this? My days at 3301 are numbered, and subsequently I feel like it's time to come forward. I don't possess all the answers, but in my time with Cicada, I have learned a lot about them. Who they are, what they want, and where they are going. They preach transparency, yet they themselves are one of the most secretive and ambiguous organizations. It is time I do my part in lifting the veil. Although I am not the first dissenter, I believe my perspective offers a unique and previously unknown point of view in the inner workings of Cicada. I have no doubt I will be excommunicated following this publication of this information, but this is something I have been preparing for. I fully accept whatever consequences come my way. I will start from the beginning, I suppose. I was a pretty normal kid growing up. I played sports, I was very social, I lived a very normal life before 3301. When I was in high school, me and my friends were obsessed with conspiracy theories and cover-ups and things of that nature. It wasn't even so much that we believed any of it was true, we just found it so intriguing. None of us in our wildest dreams ever wanted to be in the middle of the fire, certainly not myself but my curiosity would eventually get the better of me. One topic of discussion we repeatedly revisited was Cicada 3301. We discovered Cicada the same way most people did at the time. They were the creepy ambiguous group that had taken discussion boards across the internet by storm. They grew a sort of culture following, which I am guilty of partaking in. Each time a new puzzle, I intensively followed it. I was captivated by it. I was just a 16 year old kid, but I thought, if I could only make it into this exclusive club, if I could pull down the curtain and see who was really pulling the strings, I would be rewarded with unparalleled enlightenment. It quickly devolved from a hobby into an obsession. I found myself up until 3, 4 in the morning on 4chan and Reddit trying to keep up to date with all the latest theories and puzzle solutions. By this time, it was the winter of my sophomore year and 3301 had already released their 2012 and 2013 puzzles. Whereas my friends began to lose interest, it was all I could think about. This went on for a while. It completely consumed me. By the start of the new puzzle, I was determined to solve the next puzzle. 2014 would be my year to prove myself. I specialize in art and history, which was definitely useful along the way, but that alone was almost useless. I had a decent background in coding and computing, but nowhere near good enough to do things on my own, so I recruited the help of a fellow student. His name was but you can call him Russ. I ask you to keep his name confidential, same as mine. He was my age, a genius in every sense of the word. His family moved to America from Russia a few years before. While most kids at 16 were worried about dating girls or grades, Russ was designing apps and writing complex code. He was gifted, but he mostly kept to himself and lacked any real social skills. When I approached him at first, with the idea he seemed disinterested. He saw Cicada as a phony treasure hunt that led nowhere. 
but I continued to depress him. Finally, he agreed to help me. Looking back, I think he only did so because he was bored. He didn't really have any friends. Even the most challenging academic courses were elementary to him. He needed a challenge, and the cicada puzzles offered just that. In January of 2014, the first puzzle was released on Cicada's Twitter. Our journey began. We weren't really sure what to expect. I had followed the previous Cicada puzzles, even solved a few on my own, but this was an entirely different animal. The 2014 puzzles were historically difficult. Most people will tell you that they still haven't been solved, but I will get to that. We worked together under the same pseudonym. Apollo. The first few puzzles, Russ blew through. Before I could even scratch the surface, he was already on to the next piece of the puzzle. I began to feel useless. I thought eventually he would see me as a dead weight and just get rid of me. Looking back now, I think the only reason he kept me around is because we were friends. Russ really didn't have any friends. His parents were incredibly strict. He was very introverted. He lacked any real social skills. I was, in a way, all he really had. But as the puzzles grew harder and harder, even Russ hit a wall. I will be the first to admit a lot of work was piggybacking off of others. I really don't see how it could have been any other way. There is no way a single person could have solved the entire puzzle on their own. It was hard enough for an entire community of intelligent people. For Cicada to have expected us not to collaborate is foolish in my opinion. With the help of a few trusted colleagues, whom we exchanged information and solutions with, we trudged on. Everyone had a common goal, to make it to the end. Eventually the group grew selfish and hostile. It was impossible to tell who was who, what information was real, what was fake. I recalled spending weeks on trying to solve a clue, only to find out that it was a decoy designed to throw us off all the real trail. We solved enough of Liber Primus, but not the entire document. It was massive, and it would have required too much time and effort. We were able to deduce the information necessary to make it to the next puzzle, and nothing more. I don't even think those in 3301 are familiar with the whole text. Maybe the few who constructed it, it is a masterpiece. It would have taken years to construct, and longer to break. Russ and I were at our limit. We contemplated giving up entirely, but we were already too invested. We had given up nearly an entire year. School, work, family? It took a backseat to our mission to complete the Cicada quest. Giving up at that point was not an option. The 2014 puzzle wasn't unsolved. It came to a halt. Cicada had caught on to the fact that the solutions were being shared and even published. By now, it was nearly 2015 and Cicada was growing wary of people collaborating and instead of offering up a new puzzle for this year, they decided to give personalized ones to those who had made it far enough the previous year to ensure there was no way for people to work together. It is my understanding that the puzzle division keeps a very close eye on those who they believe had made it far enough. They certainly have the ability to track IP addresses, personal information, etc. of anyone who participates in recruitment. They don't do so with malicious intent. They want to ensure that an individual is who they say they are, and not someone trying to infiltrate the organization. This made things indefinitely harder, but we pressed on, working now under different accounts, doubling the puzzles and doubling the work. After several more months of excruciating work on riddles, poems, paintings, number sequences, complex coding, and mathematics, we had finally reached our final puzzle, a book cipher from Homer's Iliad, and a piano melody whose note revealed the message in Morse code. The message simply stated, Welcome. It included login information to a highly secure Tor site. What we later learned was 3301 message board. We were in but we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. If anything, my initial exposure to the Cicada Inner Sanctum offered more questions than answers. We weren't the only new recruits. If I were to guess, I would say there were among 30 to 40 others. Cicada already knew a frightening amount about us. They knew our strengths and weaknesses, what we were capable of, 
I suspect even some of our personal information. I am now aware that the puzzle and tests are not just to gauge whether or not you are worthy, but if you are, what to do with you once you get in. What puzzles do you solve quickly? What puzzles require more time and effort? These things are monitored to measure an individual's skill types. Each member of the new recruitment was given a prime number from 0 to 100,000 that we could identify one another with. The idea is that the less we know about each other, the better. From what I understand, the lower your number, the more clearance to sensitive information you had. Since I was commissioned, I have never been a higher level of clearance, but I know other members who have climbed the ranks. You work your way up in the Cicada community by demonstrating usefulness, loyalty, and trustworthiness. If Cicada has any reason to believe you are a liability, you are swiftly cut off. Your login to the message board is disabled, and you are never contacted again. I heard that is why they abandoned the initial CAKES program. People were talking about the things they weren't supposed to with other people outside of the community. Subsequently, they were removed and the project was halted. Cicada puts new recruitments into groups called Broods. Most of us refer to them as our division, each with a specific assignment. I work essentially as an errands boy. I make deliveries and transfer information. I've even done reconnaissance before. It is shit work. For lack of a better term, it's late nights, time consuming, exhausting work. Most of the time, I'm not even told enough to know what I'm doing. Deliver this envelope to this drop off point. Email the following account certain information, usually encrypted. Initially, I try not to ask questions. I kept my head low and try to do as I was told. I figured if I could hang in there and work my way up, it would pay off. These are powerful, intelligent people. People with the power to do things, to change circumstances. Ambition kept me going. Without Cicada, I was just a normal kid again. But I have grown impatient. It's been almost two years and I don't see this going anywhere. I miss my old life. I want to be a regular college student and have time for school and friends and normalcy. You can only live in the shadows for so long. People close to me are starting to ask questions. Where do I go at night? Why am I spending hours upon hours of the day on my laptop? I can't keep living a lie. I don't believe Cicada has any ill intentions. I think they are trying to be a force for the better of society. I just no longer want to be a part of it, and I feel responsible to shed light on the mystery that surrounds them. So what have I learned in the two years I have been with 3301? The real genius of Cicada is keeping everyone in the dark, even those who work for them. Recruits are broken up. There is no way of knowing who they are talking to, what your purpose is. That way, there is no way to trace anything back to 3301. So if you were compromised, or if you went rogue, you didn't have any concrete information on them. The secrecy extends within the walls of 3301. They are ghosts. But here is the information I have obtained access to. Cicada consists of roughly 500 members. Each new recruitment cycle brings about 50 new members. As I said before, members work their way up to obtain more sensitive information. 3301 originally formed as a splinter cell. It was found by former NSA, CIA, FBI higher-ups when they saw the atrocities occurring at the highest levels of government. As such, they went underground and started working in secret, hence the name Cicada. It's hard to know exactly where they operate out of, but my guess would be Vienna, Austria. Much of the information I'm responsible for relaying goes through Vienna, in one way or another. That being said, they have people in every corner of the globe. This cannot be emphasized enough. I am not sure exactly when it was founded, but I have heard it dates back as far as the early 80s. Since then, they have recruited other highly talented and capable individuals to assist them in their quest of exposing truth. Their initial focus was trying to bring to light privacy compromising programs such as PRISM, but since then, they have adopted a more broad platform of exposing corruption. Although they do have people undercover in high-level positions, both in the political and private sector, most of the group consists of normal people like myself, highly intelligent, highly skilled, but relatively normal and unassuming people. The idea is to blend into plain sight. Over the years, 3301 has made its fair share of enemies, the government, corporations, etc. So it is important that Cicada maintains a low profile. 
when I told you revealing this information could put me in danger, this is what I was getting at. I do not fear Cicada. They have a policy of non-violence and have never given me indication that I need to worry about them if I were to drop out. What I'm far more afraid of is everyone else. I have heard stories of members being harassed by the FBI, and earlier I was alluding to broods or divisions. I can't be sure how many divisions there are in total, but I am familiar with a few. I was part of the courier division, responsible for the safe transfer of information, most of which done is via the darknet, but there are plenty of real world encounters as well. Some of the other divisions I am familiar with are the hacking division, the puzzle division, the cakes division. Russ works in a division that is working on untraceable cellular data and manufacturing a new generation of cellular and computing software. At this point, this is all I feel comfortable going into. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to check me out on Twitter, 